So, it's so good to see you all. This is gonna be kind of informal. Um, and uh, it's a very serious topic for our times. And like I said, I wanna be clear on one thing, I'm not a doctor, <laughs> so I'm not, I don't have a PhD. This, this is just something that, that we do talk about. We have systems where we have people on our team that are experts, couldn't get them here for this, but, so we're just gonna talk about self-care. But I'm gonna say this, and, and this is really important from a note, write this down, because I want y'all to get it. This is for me, <laughs> or this is for us. I'm not talking about trauma-informed care when it comes to your clients, okay? I wanna share some things when it comes to the clients. One thing I realized about self-care, we can do a better job with self-care when we have self-care in our lives. You know, people ask me where do I get the energy to do all this. Always projecting energy, always working every single day. This is my every day. And then great why? Because I take care of Coach D. <laughs> I do the best I can. You know, I take care of myself. I have my down times, my relaxed times. When I leave here, here my wife and I are going to the Poconos. Everybody show me some love. You want to poke a nose. I mean, I know what the poke nose is. It doesn't even matter. We're going to have a good time. <laughs> we told our children, you're going to watch our little, they got a little sister, you're all babysitting this weekend. <laughs> Mom and dad leaving. Because we both realize self-care is important. You know what I mean? And so we go away, spend some time. We were just in Puerto Rico a few months ago. My daughter said, y'all sure have a lot of fun. <laughs> so we take care of ourselves, y'all. <laughs> So, but you got to, because, um, you know, the mental stability and all that that comes with. But I got to start because, you know, those were my last workshops. I got to do it every night. I just got to slide a little more base up in it. I just can't help myself. This is the way I'm wired. But um, I had a grandmother. How many of you love your grandmothers, grandparents? Like, how many of you love your grandparents? Man, I'll tell you, grandparents are great. You know why they're great? Because they can spoil you and send you home. <laughs> That's why they were great. You know, like, yeah, I can have some fun with you and then go back to your mom and dad, you know. And, um, and then tell them I spoke to you so you can get to it, you know. Um, my grandmother was named Ma, all right? I don't know, grandmas, they all have different names. Ma, I have another grandmother, Nana, you know. I'm like, why don't you just grandma, you know? I, I, I don't call her grandma, I'm, I'm, I'm Nana. <laughs> okay, okay. But, um, but Ma was one of the sweetest women that you ever would meet in your entire life. I mean, just, you ever met a person that seemed like they never had a care in the world? Anybody ever met anybody like that before? Mm -hmm. Just not a care in the world. And she, you know, she kind of lived most of her life in poverty. She didn't have a whole lot. Had this little one bedroom place. And all 9,000 of her grandchildren would go flood that one place. We just want to be there with her. You know what I mean? And then she used to make this stuff called, you know, some of she's from the Bahamas. And she used to make this stuff called Johnny Cake. And you make it in a pan and you, you know, you put some butter on it. <coughs> Jelly, and you just felt like you died and going to heaven. That was like our meal, you know, she did that. Then she would get up a cup of coffee, and we like, another, our parents would love to do that. My mom would love to do that. She would give me a cup of coffee. Come to find out later, it wasn't really coffee. It was more cream and sugar than coffee. But she just would do it to make us feel like we were doing something. And so, but Ma was our go-to. No matter what our problems were, Ma was our go-to. Could you do me this favor, Sophia? Somebody close that door. I can hear that talk out there. And so be disturbed by that. Thank you. And so Ma was our, our go-to. And um, and so when I would go to mom, no matter how often we would go to her, no matter what the problem, the whole world could be falling apart. I just broke up with my girlfriend. It don't matter what it was. Ma had one response. And I want you all to take this response back to the people you interact with, your family, your friends, your coworkers, across the board. And this is what Ma would say. And it was like clockwork. No matter what you told me, it's going to be all right, baby. <laughs> I wanted more from her than that. <laughs> she never gave advice. She never told you what to do. She never said, maybe you should think about that or think about this. She just would say, it's going to be all right, baby. So once you put your nice mask on, look at somebody next to you, smile, wave at them, and say, it's going to be all right, baby. Come on, I said something. <laughs> come on, look at somebody else and tell them, it's going to be all right, baby. Some of you are not saying, you didn't say it, I'm looking right at you. It's going to be all right, baby. <laughs> but no, it's, you know what? Don't you all know the truth? It typically does, right? You know, sometimes we stress ourselves out so much about things that eventually, is it going to be all right, baby? We make our way through it. But when we're in it, we're just stressed and full of angst. And, you know, and, and, and a lot of that is just a part of the human experience. 
But when it gets and it tilts, when it's no longer part of the human experience, and it's a part of my DNA, then that's when it becomes a problem. When everything's a challenge, when everything's a problem, when I can't seem to get these thoughts of fear and thoughts of angst out of my mind, that's when we may have gone into a position of dealing with trauma to some extent. And sometimes trauma happens and we don't know it happened. It could be trauma for something someone said to us, something someone did to us, an experience that we had, and we don't even know. And so we can't even under, we can't connect why I'm thinking a certain way to something that happened because we've never been exposed to something, the fact that it did happen. And so what we need a lot of times, that's what we need therapy. I'm all for therapists. People think that's not, no, it's not. I think sometimes therapy is a phenomenal thing because it helps us to get to the roots of why we're thinking about things a certain way. And so I know a lot of friends who have gone through therapy. I've had therapy about a few things, and trust me, it helps. So, but um, so this is that's important. So, um, this in your next small groups of three or four, I want you to do this. I do a lot of what's called think tanks, and we do this in our in our work with organizations like yours. We do a lot of think tanks. So I want to start off with a think tank, and I want you to talk about how has COVID nineteen impacted you, your clients, and your fellow coworkers. Just for a few moments, get in groups of like three or four. All right, get to know your get to know your fellow. All right, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're not. 